boom we're live ain't that the coolest thing here it is um should we call this the christmas academy guys i love it i love it me too who would have thought we've got a north pole guest here with us hey welcome everybody to the remarkable <laughs> results radio town hall academy the only weekly forum for automotive aftermarket professionals that brings a fresh innovative discussion to inspire and grow individuals and companies. Hey, we're live on Facebook and we'll repurpose this academy as a podcast by Wednesday of next week so you can listen audio only. Welcome to episode 47 on 21 tips on getting an edge over the competition, part two. Hey, welcome back, you guys. We were uh, in August of uh, this, this year, 2017, and we did part one. I would love to encourage anyone to go out and listen to episode 28 of the Academy. When we, we did this, there were, I think, more than 21 tips, and they were really good. Lots of listens to that one, and it was great. Hey, uh, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the support of our sponsor, Jasper Engines and Transmissions. You know, Jasper has over 2,000 associates, three manufacturing facilities, two distribution centers, and 45 branch offices across the country. They're all working to produce, transport, and deliver the perfect product in the drivetrain category for you. And that's what they do best, keep customers happy. Well, who's here with us today? <clears throat> well, uh, Jeremy O'Neill. Hello, Jeremy. Good morning, Carm. Good morning, Facebook world. How is the remarkable results? Uh, world we live in. World. It's great. Yeah. Jeremy's president and lead sales trainer for Advisor Fix and a shop owner, Freedom Automotive in Hesperia, California. Absolutely. Glad to have you here, man. And then Thanks in, the, for having me. in my, uh, anytime, man, in the bottom left corner, I'm not sure on your screen, it's Mark Goldsmith. Well, anyway, Mark's from Mark's Independent Service in Chatsworth, California. It's amazing I have California people here. And of course, Santa Claus. Hello, Santa Hello, Claus. Hello, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and um, in, in the Happy festive, holidays. In the festive spirit of Kukui, Todd Westerland, the CEO of Kukui. I mean, you guys, are you doing some kind of party down there? Uh, yep, absolutely. Now, I was just looking at the list over here, Carm. You're right at the top, okay? <laughs> right at the top. I was Wait, is the, industry, the industry naughty and nice, number one, Carm. So, I, gotta, I gotta ask that. You know, Listen, I, I want to tell you something. I, the, I am in an envious position in what I do here. Yesterday, there was a container out at my door, and there were six filet mignons in it. And <laughs> and it, it is just you're welcome. It is so uh, yes, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, Santa. You must have known what was on my mind. Well, anyway, great to have you here. We we know that this is is the holiday weekend and. Uh, I'm sure there's a, a ton of people that want want to tune in in a really relaxed environment, which is why I think we picked uh, this to have some fun with it. I even got my Santa hat on. Well, listen, let's start. Uh, by, by the way, I just want to say that what we did uh, back in August was was really uh, exciting, and it was it was refreshing, and it, it it was heavy as far as the content that we got. But you didn't have to wire. Very good. All right, the yeah. first one's coming <laughs> okay. to you, man. All right, <laughs> Mark. Easy appointment making with barcodes on our lube stickers. I love that. Oh wow! Yeah, we uh we we got these from Raymac, and um, when we just the customers come in at a certain month, we just put on on their windshield and post coming back, you know, in six months time. So there's a little barcode if they want to make a an appointment, just put your phone up there, and they can just go right to their to their window sticker and make an appointment, and it works really good. Is it a QR code? Yeah, it's a QR code. Got exactly. it. Exactly. Got yes. it. A QR and, code. And yeah, you just buy enough for the year, how many cars are coming in. You just put it every six months out every time they come in like that. And if you got a car that needs fast oil change, you put one out three months out like that. So I come to your place, the sticker's on my car. Are you reminding me, hey, if you need to get in touch with us in any way, just scan the loop sticker? Exactly. We tell everybody that if you have an issue or anything like that, just scan it or it goes right to our website. It does cool. everything. That's pretty good. So, good, really idea. good. Good idea. Good yes. idea. Thank you for that. We got, and, and by the way, we have 21 and some bonuses of great little tips like this, which I, which I, yeah, it's maybe an edge over the competition, but I also think it makes you, you know, a more complete, complete shop. You know, Todd, you brought this idea to us back in August because you were out on the road. You visited back then 640 some shops, you know, in your, in your road caravan. How many are you up to now? 
we've crossed over 900 and the van is in Denver right now. We'll finish thousand within a 365 day period. Wow. Okay. Very, yeah. very, very aggressive Good plan. Times. Good for you. Uh, number two here goes to you, Todd. Have the history of the shop displayed in some way. One shop you visited had a full museum that builds pride in being a client. Yeah, that was a uh, Wilhelm Automotive in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, and their their core location has a full museum. All I mean, it was it was amazing to see the different shops. And, you know, they've been around since I believe it was the '40s, maybe actually the '30s. Um, you know, in locally California, um, motoring specialist up in Vacaville, they take a, an aerial photo of the shop. Um, over, you know, over they're doing it every year, every two years. But it was just really, you know, as I looked at it, there's just a sense of pride of this has been here for a while. They they, they know they they know some things. So I, I like that. Me too, and and I, it brings up the thought in my mind of legacy. Uh, I've been interviewing some uh, people that have been in the industry a lot of years. There's a lot of wisdom to share and to see some of our family businesses that have been in second, third generation. It's a great idea. It's a, it's a great, I mean, people may even have the old oil cans with the, with the, with the metal top spot on it. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's, that's cool to look at. It, it really, it really was. It really from, was. From glass and metal to plastic, right? Hey, here's something I contributed to the list. Uh, this came uh, last time. We never got a chance to put it out there. It came from Bill Hill out in uh, Ohio. He has an outdoor lock box with a four-digit code to drop off the loaner keys and to pick up your vehicle if it's, if it's after hours. I think it's a great idea. You guys got any comments on that? Have you seen? You probably have seen that a lot of places. Absolutely. I, uh, I love that idea. I mean, as a service advisor, we push, push, push to create the sales and sometimes uh, getting things done at the last minute when you're ready to go home and spend some time with family. You don't want to wait till seven or, you know, that customer tells you I'll be down in five minutes and it's four hours later. They're still not there. So those are great automated tools that, that help. I've got a friend down in San Diego. He has six different boxes and they'll text the code over to the customer. The keys are in it. Very easy to change the codes out. Really secure. It works out really well. So you do the transaction over the phone. They just come and pick up the, the car and go. Absolutely. All the paperwork's in the car. The car's ready to go and uh, out they go. All about convenience. I love it. Hey, Mark, how's that wire? Good. Can you hear me still? <laughs> yes, I can. I'm still, I'm still squeezing. Yes. <laughs> Mark, text messaging capabilities to stay in constant contact with your client. Well, a lot of people are doing that. We always, you know, calling's really good about telling when you know what, what's going on what time it's you know where we're at with the car and what time it will be done it really helps the customer a lot because they can arrange their day and everything it works really well how it works excellent just, i know there's a lot of uh information you know companies out there doing that and we're looking into them right now in fact we're going to talk to you about jeremy about your company too but uh i think it'll free her up for some more time but we, we she's constantly doing that and people are really happy with that so it's a text message really it helps a lot yeah, nice. absolutely. And, and I'll, I'll uh, follow up on that. And um, one of the things when I'm writing service at the counter, when I use our software and our program, and it's not, you know, it's not my company. I just, I love it. And I promote it. It's, it's phenomenal. Chris Cloutier developed it. Wonderful guy. He's been on the podcast before. And there's a number of companies that do this. I look at automating communication as much as I possibly can. So when we move a car from uh, check into diagnosing, customer gets an automated text message. So within the first two hours of your car being here, you've been proactively communicated three times from our shop. And during the transaction, you've got seven to eight automated text messages that go out. And if you do the math on that, the text message literally takes three seconds to do. Okay, I'm going to click this box, move the car over. For me to call 12 customers would take literally 24 to 36 minutes to leave a voicemail, which customers don't want. So it saves me between 30 minutes to two hours a day by automating my outgoing communication. And if you look at how we've developed so many five-star reviews at Freedom Auto Repair, it's all developed around this communication where the customer's constantly in the loop and they know what's going on. I, would, I need to get a survey. I'd love to see a survey on the customer reaction to this. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I love the fact that they may get six to seven or eight texts as their vehicle goes through the flow, um, is it overkill, guys, or is it just the right amount? 
depends on how you set it up. You've got to get a customer who's engaged in it. Now understand, we deliver the information the way the customer wants it. One of the questions we ask every customer in initial write-up is, hey, Carm, how do you prefer to be, what's your preferred method of communication today? Do you want a phone call, a text, an email, or do you want an in-person sales presentation? What would you like? Uh, that way we're delivering the information the way that the customer wants it. If they don't want the text, they don't get it. We opt them out of it. And you, you're right, we get 10% of the time, we'll send that first text out and there's question marks that come back from the customer like, what is this? Well, you didn't pay attention when you dropped the car off. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you're, okay. you're right. There are some customers that won't want it, but you've got to deliver the information the way the customer wants it today. Yeah, well, they, 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 they communicate, you just got to tell them and they, they agree to opt in or opt out and that's, they mm -hmm. prefer a text over email. A lot of them do. Like I would say 75% want text other than emails. Listen, I, I love where we are with technology, but so much of it, I think from, we can all agree to it. Here I'm talking to a guy who's the president and CEO of a technology company. <laughs> the fact of the matter is we have to understand it. And so many times we only understand a portion of it. And I think to your point, Jeremy, which I think is really, what, what are all these texts? Yeah, you weren't paying attention. Well, no, the message didn't get through somehow. Right. And, you know, we're, we're all guilty. We're all guilty. Well, well and the last thing I'll say on this, and you know, one of the other points we're going to talk about a little bit later on is emerging technologies. When you look at the digital sales process, um, you know, the reason I bought Freedom Auto Repair this year was to really test this stuff out. And what I'm finding is we have a hybrid uh, sales model now, which is a good part of the old school where the customer wants that relationship. They want to trust you. They want to deal with that trusted advisor. And if you go completely digital, you're going to cost yourself money. You're going to have a decrease in ARO. You're going to have customers that pick and choose what they want. They don't understand the complexity of proper maintenance and taking care of their car rights. So we can't go 100% digital. We're not going to have a kiosk that replaces the service advisor anytime soon because we're still human beings. So we've got to blend the best of the digital world with the old school rapport building, make eye contact, give your customer a high five or a hug. It's, it's a hybrid system right now. Let me share that uh, today's episode that went out with Dutch Silverstein. And Dutch says, you got to have customers for life. Consumers become customers, become clients. And I guess all the digital is great to have. But if you don't lose sight, that just about every place on the back of a computer terminal, on a plaque in the break room, you have the words customers for life. I don't think then you get the digital gets a little, you know, it doesn't get so cloudy when you know the digital is a tool in, the, in your arsenal of creating customers for life. It's still about the customer. And like you say, their best method. Hey, thanks, Jeremy. Coming right to you. Look at the oil chain sticker on every car. And if it's yours and, and if yours isn't there, uh, change it and put your own on the windshield. Ah, yes. Switcheroo. Absolutely. I was so excited. I did a Facebook video on this this week and uh, it was one of the funnest videos I've shot all year uh, going to uh, Volkswagen Jetta and the car had come in like two weeks before and I was going to do it and I forgot to change out the sticker and she left. I was like, darn, I missed that opportunity. Well, her car comes back and it's still got the competitor's oil change sticker in there. All right, I'm going to do this. So basically we look at every car and if our oil change sticker is not in that windshield, it gets our oil change sticker before it leaves. Now, what we do is we match the mileage that it's due for, put it in there and we educate the customer and we just let them know, hey, we wanna be your car care guys. We wanna be your one-stop shop for everything. We also do oil changes. We changed out your window sticker because welcome to the family. You found your new home for automotive repair and maintenance. And go ahead and pull out your cell phone. Let's go ahead and get you on the calendar for your next service. Now, this is where the magic happens. Having the customer pull out their phone and get in their calendar where they put us on the appointment. So, hey, Carm, your next oil change is due February 9th. Do you have an opening on that day in your calendar? Most customers will be like, uh, yeah, I'm open. Well, cool. Go ahead and put Freedom Auto Repair there at 8 o'clock. Now I just beat everything else in their life right here on their phone. Yeah, you. So that's what I'm trying to do. And I, I just, I love the fact that when they go somewhere else, I want to find out why. Why did you go to that other shop? Why were we not able to earn that transaction? Were we not convenient enough? Did we not give you the appointment time that you want? Or do we take too long on our services? So whatever I can get information out of that, the advisor needs to get that back to the, the shop owner so we can make the marketing decisions that we need to. Todd, what do you think of that tactic? Okay. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, he's back. There he is. I'm back. Okay, am yeah, I here? there we go. Okay, good. The, um, we've been doing that for quite a while, but you're taking a little farther, Jeremy. You guys can hear me? 
Yeah. Okay, great. We do, when they come in, we do some service to find a problem on a car and we see that competitor sticker on her. We automatically do it. We tell the customer and they're, they're good with it because they're, they're coming okay. back with us. But the cell phone, I love the idea of a pull and asking the calendar, pull your yeah. cell phone out for your date. I haven't done that yet, but we're going to start. I would think that if you didn't tell the customer, I, I, I'm getting echo back again, but if you didn't tell the customer, I think there's a breach of some ethics or integrity right there. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yeah, we tell all the customers. Mm. Well, it's the same thing of the shops that you know, swap out license plate frames without telling the customer about it and how upset customers can be with the license plate frames. And I've had, I've had long conversations with shop owners about having permission. You know, Seth Godin wrote a really great permission book. Permission marketing, years. baby. Yeah, permission-based marketing. Absolutely. It's what it's all about. Carm, so. I, I think that's a great future class is legalities of all the different technologies and things we can do within the shop. So as an example, we are talking about the text message, and that was kind of quiet, but I've been researching all the different text messaging laws in every single state. They're all different. They're not the same. The laws as far as how you get permission, I've seen shop owners in their shop go, well, I'll just use my cell phone. I'm just going to sit here and text message the customer of their vehicle's ready. Woo-hoo-hoo! That is a major lawsuit. That, that is completely illegal. And every single time you do that, there's a huge fine that is associated with that. So uh, same thing with the license plate frames. I didn't know about that. Um, even email, you know, uh, there's certain ways as far as you have to have an opt out. In text message, you have to have an opt in. And legally now too, some states want in a paper opt in, meaning if you're going to text message me, it doesn't matter what system you're using out there. If I physically do not sign it, a paper that says it, which is crazy because we're all heading in the direction of a paperless shop. I mean, how seriously? It's, it's really wild. And other ones almost have no law. It's almost like, yeah, if they say, okay, text away, you know? So that could be a really good Thank you. Thank class. you very much. It's a great yeah. point to bring up. I think we're all heading down – uh, so fast, a, a tunnel of technology. And I guess the legislators are, are hovering around us saying, you can't do this, you can't do that. I mean, it's not about gaining revenue. Is it, are they legislating us to uh, how we, is it, is it really about texting while driving or is it other issues? Oh, it's just actually, you take a look at some of the made privacy. It's privacy, happened. right? Privacy. It's yeah. privacy. Yeah. Okay. All it's right. It's really, okay. People not are bored. A, it's privacy. Uh, Mark, next one to you. Pinch that, <laughs> pinch that wire, man. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay. Free headlight okay, cleaning on big jobs. Well, we surprise the customer. When they're spending awesome. any room of $25,000 to $4,000 in these cars, we don't say a word about their headlights, and we clean them. It doesn't take that long. The technician, we got it down, and they love it. I mean, they just they come up. They just look at their car. Of course, it's clean. They look at their headlights. Oh, my gosh. Would you put new headlights in our car? I said, no, we just clean them for you because you came in and, you know, you did a lot of work on your car. It makes you remember us, and that really works. How long is the well. job? It takes about 10, 15 minutes to do it that way. Uh, we got it down pretty well. So what's the big, it may sometimes 20, it depends on there. So it really works well. Excellent. And we will, and we will continue. But first, you know, at Jasper Transmissions, uh, Engines and Transmissions, quality and customer service is their number one goal. Their associates take pride in their work and it shows in the quality drivetrain products they produce. Their quality and customer service has kept them growing for 75 years. Associate owned company, 75 years. Great, great company. All right, um, free headlight cleaning. Number seven, create a cool shirt. This is yours, Todd, and put the year on it. They can bring in the shirt in the next year and get a new one. Keep them coming back. You know, um, everywhere you go now, even across the street from where I live, there's a, a restaurant chain called uh, Lazy Dog. And I noticed they had their kind of new branding shirts for 2017. There was the year on there. Uh, you know, I consistently see that, that really, as we build these brands, people really love the brands and they really like to wear the shirts. And so, you know, as a shop, as you have that, that amazing brand, like these two gentlemen do, and you have a, a shirt that you can give out and do a limited run to keep the cost down, um, just kind of settle in. Here's what the budget's going to be. Here's the only amount I'm going to do. And then as you hand them out, you can tell the consumer, 
uh, maybe even creatively give them out to the people that are have you know don't come back as often and say if you come back next year and give me the shirt back or come back in this year um your next service you know uh you can get the 2018. um i look back at our shop and we had we had done that and it was weird that you know i'd be wearing a shirt just like five years old the years were on it but i really liked the shirt the branding was cool so you can never have enough shirts huh yep 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 Never can have enough. Good idea. Thank you. Mark, discounted car rentals. Okay, great. Yeah, we always give discounted car rentals and all the big jobs too. We got a place, they pick them up. We take care of the first day if we have to. And then um, if the customer can't get anywhere, we can't Uber them. They want a car for the day. We give them that car too. And it's, it's what's $23, $24 for a day when you're doing a major job. And people love that too. And, uh, but, they, but if it goes more than one day at, at their choice, they can't get it. They have to pay for the second day. But they love it. We're splitting the bill with them. That really helps a lot on the cars. Offering a solution. Yes, that's how you did. Everybody, all you guys do the same thing. You got to get the customer. They're getting happy. That's why we do Uber and Lyft. And they really love that too. It really works out great. Take number nine, free Wi-Fi. Well, yeah, in the shop, we give them free Wi-Fi because we have a lot of millenniums come here when they're dropping their cars off. Some guys don't want to leave. They want to stay up there. We have a little, well, we don't have an ice box. We talked this before, but there's only soda water. <laughs> there's no, there's no power drinks in there. <laughs> but uh, they see we, we cater them truly well. You got the coffee, water, and soda up there, and we got a heater up there. When it's cold, it's rare. But uh, they, that, 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 then we give them our, we, we give them used to our Wi-Fi, just like uh, Starbucks. And, and the secret to, and why that's valuable is that there's no such thing as unlimited data as much as everyone tells us that there is. Am I right? Right. Yeah, exactly. And so they really want to use some of your bandwidth. Right. Exactly. That's why they clip on. Everybody always asks. I got a little sign on the, on the wall and they can go right to it. And what if we even put a little twist on that in the, because you can change the name of your actual uh, log in there and you said something like, leave us a review. Good idea. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I, and keep in mind too, you got the market, you, you want, you can get marketing out of it. I know Yelp is really pushing businesses right now to promote free Wi-Fi, and they'll drive. And I know there's certain parts of the country that hate Yelp. So if you don't like Yelp, just <laughs> tune out right now, but it's fine. If you want more Yelpers to your business, make sure you've got that turned on in your Yelp business account that you've got free Wi-Fi, and it will drive those people in. Absolutely. Love very it, good. guys. Thank you very much. Um, number 10, this goes to you, Jeremy. Ask every happy customer to share their experience in the world with a five-star review. I think you just mentioned that. Yeah, now make sure it's happy customer, not every customer. <laughs> we got to pay attention to the words there, right? Did I say happy? You do not want... Well, you did. Yeah. I'm just pointing that out. You good, don't good. want every customer to share their experience <laughs> with the world. There are some times that we drop the ball. Yeah. Uh, for instance, this morning, we had an issue where we had six cars broken into. So um, I'll be a little bit more selective on who I asked to share their experience with the world. Now, here's the thing. When you look at most of the sites, they don't want you having a kiosk or if you look at the IP address where customers are leaving their reviews at, it's best not to have it done at your shop, the location there. Um, and we don't want to particularly ask for a five-star review. We don't want to reward a five-star review. But what I do, it's organic. You know, when customers come in, it starts from the moment they come into the shop. How'd you hear about us? I found you on Google. Oh my gosh, you found us on Google? Wow, we have our work cut out for us because you've seen those reviews, right? All right, get ready for your five-star experience because here it goes. Hey guys, we got a Google uh, person here. We got to give them that five-star experience. Now, that starts there. That sets the stage. At the end of the experience, after we're done with our transaction, Hey, Carm, I hope you're really satisfied with your experience. And if we did deliver that five-star experience, please share your experience with the world. That's the parting shot right there. And you'll see those reviews come up organically. And I, I've purposely, I don't have automated review get uh, emails or texts. I don't have that turned on right now because I want to drive things organically to see what the volume is of customers that were so impressed with our service that they were compelled to go share their story with the world. And that's what we want. We want that passion. We want that energy. We want that inspiration. I want to drive those organic reviews because yeah. there's more verbiage in it. The customers share their story uh, and it ranks higher. So I look at our Yelp site. We have a lot of, you know, I get complaints from shop owners all the time that Yelp buries our reviews. I'm like, I don't care 
care what they do. I'm going to drive so many reviews that they're going to have to put my stuff up. And if you get the customer that shares their story, those reviews don't get pushed away because they're the algorithm picks that stuff up. So the organic review is what I want to drive. Okay. And it, it all starts. You have to ask, teach your shuttle drivers, this. teach your technicians, this teach your service advisors, this. shop owners. You've got to do it. Every person that has that personal connection with the customer. Hey, if you were satisfied with your experience, please share your experience with the world. And if you weren't, let me know so we can fix it. Right. Got it. We want Thank that you. experience shared with Thank the world. Thank you. Thank you. Todd have a mascot. Could be oh, your golden that's... retriever. Could be that amazing restored Chevy truck. Yes. If you think of a, take a look at Dave tools website and he has a, he has a truck that is yeah. just, it's, it's so iconic to his shop. Now it's become the mascot. And he actually has another car that I also feel is also a mascot, but very huge take. Um, and, and we have a moment of silence for, uh, you know, Mary Kimmett's a wonderful, uh, lab that was just such, just amazing to greet everybody and for so many years was just the mascot i mean you i i would watch that that dog was hilarious it would just get up it would walk about three feet forward sit there and get pets then walk back and lay down and and i'm like oh that's a life that is the life uh sunny sunoco uh you know on the east coast they have amazing i absolutely love their dog it was just he was so he was such a character Yes, you have to have the right dog, okay, with the right temperament, okay, to be in the shop, um, but done properly. Um, I think I, I've seen a couple cats, but that's pretty rare. It's, it's more of kind of the, the dog that's right there. And, you know, you think of it, then you put it on a shirt, you know, then you match that, match that marketing into it. And what's another thing, too, is it, it, we're, we're thinking of kind of marketing we do want to bond with the animal owners who do really value, you know, pets. And that also shows a, a humanity in the shop, which I think is important. Pet friendly is huge. Um, I don't know. I think, I know it's more than 50, 60% of people own pets and uh, pet friendly is, is, is a great marketing tool. You're right, Todd. Hey, thanks for that tip. Um, next one, Jeremy goes to you, uphold your standards. Wow, I mean, what a what a what a heavy discussion here! But everything we do is being watched by customers and employees. We will be tested to make tough decisions, and people will watch how you react to those tough decisions. Believe in your standards and live by your code of conduct. Yeah, you know this this happened to me uh, last week, and I remember I was out in the shop and I was talking to one of my technicians about how we were going to approach a certain job, and he tested me. He asked me a question about, well, do we really have to put that part on? And I know what he was doing. He was looking at if I'm driven by profit or if I'm really looking at the good of the customer doing the repair right. And there's a phrase that I hate in shops. I absolutely hate this phrase. It's good enough. Nothing is good enough. I love the phrase. If it's not perfect, it's not right. And we do perfect work. And I remember not only that moment when he asked me that question, I turned around. My other two technicians were watching us. And I said, you know what? These guys are testing my leadership ability right now. And they're really testing my ethics. Where are my ethics? And basically what, and, and you know, it happens, you know, in, in businesses all, all across the country where they do just good enough and they don't do the job right. And a lot of times I'll see shops that deal with fleet, um, you know, warranty repairs differently. They'll fleece the car and they wouldn't ask that to a, um, a retail customer. And then at the same time, a customer or a customer's car versus a friend's car or a family member, they'll do the inspection differently and they won't recommend shocks or struts at 80,000 miles. And no, oh, it's my friend's car. Don't put the struts on there. It doesn't need them. Well, then why are you recommending them to your customer? So we have this code of conduct that we should live by and uphold our industry standards. But every single thing that you do is being watched and your customers are also going to watch it as well. So just understand that you're being watched every, everything that you do, every decision you make may seem inconsequential. It may seem inconsequential, but if it's not perfect, it's not right. And you've got to live by your code of conduct. Uh, I guess all of that goes without saying, but I'm really glad we, we included it here because every once in a while we need one of those reminders. Reminders. Thank you. Todd, uh, number 13. I just think this is so cool. <laughs> I really do. Uh, invest in nice pens <laughs> and that last. And oh. work. 
I love it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some <laughs> examples here, okay? This is this one right here. I love this pen. This was a limited run. Um, it's it writes perfect. Um, I have a couple different examples over the years of different ones that, that this is a more of a ballpoint pen. Um, this one here per, uh, was okay. This this one this one wasn't my favorite. Plasticky. It, I don't know. It was, it was all right. And take this one right here. Okay, this is what cardboard on there. So here's the thing. This pen has been writing for four years. It writes perfect. It is my favorite pen. I, I have about four of them sitting next to me and I'm running out because um, they just continue this particular one. I had a shop, a transmission shop uh, one year in Las Vegas, give me one of his pens. And he said, that pen will last you probably eight years. And I still have it. It's a beautiful pen. It writes absolutely amazing. This is why Jeremy is on the on the nice list there. Think about this, because that pen also is another reflection of that that quality that, that goes forward, just like he was just saying. So if I'm still using your pen and it's still writing two years from now, kind of says the work you're doing on my car is gonna it's gonna be the same type of quality. You know, have we had a this one, I, I gotta cover up the hotel there, but you know, <laughs> these things these things last, I don't know, a couple times, and then they're dead. You know, they just run out of ink and I mean, okay. Maybe for a hotel that's too much. I don't know. It it, it is expensive. But you know, we're have to keep looking for the big picture down the road it's, it's all the whole pieces it's a great point i think your message here is if you're going to give something to someone make it last make it of good quality uh don't make it tchotchke cheap that's very good got it okay hey you know what i never realized uh, mark is that this next one was actually almost in the same category as the mascot and, right. I, and, and I, I never put them together but I love it, dog biscuits and water bowls. But those are for customers. Right. They're all for customers. <laughs> no. So, but no, we, we since we customers' dogs, excuse me. You're right. Is that, well, the customers eat them too sometimes. Good protein. But sometimes <laughs> I eat them. <laughs> but but um, the, uh, so read the, read the label. Since we read, since we, uh, <laughs> since we remodeled our bathroom, thanks to Colleen, we have a lot of new things. We have a lot of customers come in to keep their dogs happy. We have a water bowl and we give the dogs biscuits too. And they, the customers really love it. And we take pictures with the dogs and the customer and they love that even better when they get a picture taken too and put it on our website or even our uh, Facebook page. They really like it a lot. Good tip. Thank you. Thank you. Number 15, Jeremy, don't hide from emerging tech. You talked about this already. Or new ways to gain eyeballs and customers. Yelp, connected car, new services. Yeah, and I think, you know, just this year a lot, um, the feedback I've gotten from a lot of people I've talked to is, hey, Jeremy, what are you doing for marketing for the shop? And, you know, I came back and said, look, I'm doing two things. Um, I'm, we're doing a lot of things, but two, two marketing channels, Google and Yelp. Oh, Yelp doesn't work. Yelp sucks. Da, 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 da. Okay, understand that the world is changing. And as soon as you put your opinion on something, you block yourself to new opportunities. So, just be open. I mean, try it out. It may not work for your area. Yeah, there may be two people in your entire town that use Yelp, but guess what? They might be the wealthiest people in your town that want to bring you a ton of business. And if you think that Yelp sucks, they're not going to come in. So I'm not here to promote Yelp at all. It's just these emerging technologies and the mindset, it's the mindset that goes with it. We're human beings. We resist change. Be open to new and emerging technology because I got news for you guys. And Todd and Mark, you guys will probably agree with this. The changes we're going to see in the next 12 months, 24 months are going to dwarf what we've seen in the last five years. So we've got to be open and ready to change. Absolutely. You know, you're so right about that. I have, I have just sensed that in some of the forums that I, I'm in. And, and I guess my, my best piece of advice is don't lock your thinking. Don't, don't, don't become hardened in any one area because what you think today may be so different tomorrow because what you were – what you were opinionated about as a company or a service could drastically move into a completely different arena, do a 180, you know, reinvent themselves. And all of a sudden now you have to, you're not going to eat crow, but you, you basically have to, I think, be more open. Like you said, uh, stop being so closed minded. Thanks. That's, that's the lesson right there, Jeremy. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mark, um, squeeze that wire. 
uh, drop off vehicles to guests' houses that can't coordinate a ride with their busy schedule. Yes, uh, it worked. I, I have a couple. I had one this week. Uh, he's a director. He was shooting a movie. His car broke down, had it towed here, and he pleaded with me. He lives all the way in Venice. So me and my wife, she drove me. She followed me all the way to Venice to drop his car off. And I tell you, he is so appreciative that he called and thanked us up and down. First, he gave us a bad time saying his car broke down on the way to work, but that was a fun thing. He was <laughs> but, but he called us. He could not believe we did that for him because he's a great customer. He spends a lot of money, and I had a, it took us two hours out of my day, but it, it was kind of nice to get away from the shop for a couple hours and make the day go better. Two hours? I mean, two hours one way or an hour? No, one hour. It took an hour up there, an hour back. Wow. You know, the traffic in LA is fun, so especially to Venice. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, LA. Were, wow. We do that a lot. We got a lot of customers in Agora. We do the same thing for them if they're stuck and they need their car for family stuff and they're stuck doing something and they only one car. We do that all the time for them. They really like it. Good advice. Good advice. Thanks so much, Mark. Number 17, Todd, I'm going to give this to you. Give away a free car wash coupon. This uh, way, the liability of not scratching a car if you, if you actually, you know, wash it yourself. Yeah. So, so at my shop, we used to wash every single car, clean the windshields on the outside, clean the windshields on the inside. And it, it's every single car. Okay. We had two people doing it. it was actually one of my first jobs was just washing a car properly i learned so much from that because you, you i learned how to drive every single car there was a uh, great thing to start before i was a uh, you know tech for 15 years and then on top of that i'd knock the rear view mirrors off just go to clean the window <laughs> conk knock that thing off and i'm like oh no so i had the glue kit to, to get those things back on properly well we had a new guy start at the shop he went and washed the, washed the car and, you know, his dad didn't teach him the way our dads did, how we washed that car perfectly. And he used something abrasive and he just, it looked like it was a Brillo pad. I mean, it was just scratches everywhere. It just took out the whole paint job. And that actually was kind of the end of the deep washes. We started sending them down the street. So when I was in a John, uh, John Epstein shop uh, down, um, uh, you know, John, mm -hmm. um, so he had this, this great thing where they have a free car wash coupon they can give out. And the way they do it, that they use it as a sales tool also for the people at the counter. Maybe kind of Jeremy, I, I think we got six of those we got a hand out, right? Boy, today, you know. Um, that, that, you know, there could be some ways that we're able to kind of work that. So that I thought was pretty interesting that it puts a liability on somebody else so so is it the is it the basic wash or do you you give the luxury car wash away i think yeah i think it's a basic wash basic it's pretty okay. expensive but still you know even for a basic down there i might i might then just pay for the premium car wash but in my mind it still came from the shop mm -hmm. i mean it's a wonderful gift it you is know, oh my car's getting it dirty is. I got to get down there to get my car service, you know, so I can get that free you know, car wash coupon. It's serious. Yeah. People go, Oh, I, I, I waited to bring my car in because it's so dirty. Cause I knew you guys would wash it. Sure, sure. I'm like, Oh, and a lot of, a lot of yeah. the car wash businesses, when you go talk to them, if you buy in bulk, you, know, you can get a car wash for two or three bucks if you're buying a hundred or 200 a month. And wow. I, dude, I remember when, when I had my shop in Flagstaff, there was this Ford Windstar. I took it down and the car wash was automated and it had a high pressure washer. And I didn't see that there was a, a, a little dime size oh, spot no. on the, no, I'm serious, on the hood that was flake oh. that that and i was standing outside the car when this thing hit the water hit and there's blue flakes of paint oh. everywhere <laughs> and the entire hood got basically sandblasted oh. and i go back to the shop dripping with water blue specks all over and the customer goes jeremy we're getting rid of the car anyways it's not a big deal oh. like, oh. there's anything i've got to paint this van this is so bad <laughs> oh my Good story. Thank you so much for that. Hey, you know, this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the support of Jasper. Uh, in addition to the strict quality remanufacturing steps they take at Jasper Engines and Transmissions, they can actually improve a drivetrain's component's original design so that it runs longer and better than when it was new. Check out their featured engine and transmissions pages at Jasper Engines. 
com. Wow. <laughs> They're here to help us so we can have all this fun here today. Uh, thank you for that. And the number 18, interesting, Todd, loaner cars and shuttle cars are all for sale. So, so at my shop, um, we, we specialized in Toyota Honda at that time. So it, we look back in the early 90s, you know, you'd have a, a 91 Camry that, that was maybe a four cylinder stripped down model. And for whatever reason, the, the customer decided there was just too much for them to fix it. And we'd pick a couple of those up and literally in the, right in front of the passenger seat there, it would say, this vehicle is for sale for this much. And the reason why I put that one down is I was driving the consumer home one day and he said, you know what? I like this car. I, I need to get my daughter a car. Um, I I'm going to buy this car right now. And he bought the loaner car right then and there. Let me tell you the bad side of that. That was the, <laughs> that was the last one of our loaner cars. And we had this old Toyota Corolla wagon that was this magenta orange thing that was just, oh. And so every time we'd lose the last good loaner, he'd say, go get the magenta Corolla. And I'm like, oh, no, go get the wagon, cruise around in that thing. So, hey, you know. Um, it's it, not a bad idea, it though, spin, spinning those cars, and you could probably make a couple of bucks at it, right? Yeah, 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 he really did. He always had tried to always have three on the lot at the, at the same wow. time. Sometimes it was up to five, and it, it it really wasn't that much work. It sounds like a lot of work to get your license, park them, all of those things. But you know, we keep the the loaners kind of moving. Okay, get the flow going. It's, it's really good. Great, great tip. Thank you very much. We just sometimes just we see our loaner cars, but we don't even think of selling them and we just want to run them. And another great feature of loaner cars, let me chime in here, is that if you can get those cars up to 200,000 plus miles and somebody does take that loaner car and go and says, this car is in beautiful, beautiful shape for that many miles. Could my car do that? Yeah. So, you know, it's another great way to keep the loaner car in really good shape. Make sure you you know, it's a high miles car because I think that proves the quality work and that, that whole maintenance piece that, that, uh, that, that w which is where we're headed and we, we have to head as a greater percentage of our, of our volume in maintenance. Okay. Uh, Mark, you are up next. Squeeze that wire. I'm Guest, Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah great. Okay. Guest loyalty program with rewards cards that they receive cash back on sales. Yes, they receive. Well, actually, they put it towards their services. They can they get two percent or three percent on their on their total bill without tax, of course, and batteries and tires. But uh, they get a percentage back, and a lot of people keep them. And they come in, you know, they they save them. They come about in a year, then they get a free service. It comes out almost to a free service. They then they come in and they spend so much money, they put it towards their next last service. It could be sixty, seventy, eighty dollars sometimes. I had one customer save up to two hundred and forty. Took him a couple of years, but he he got it. He got a great. He felt to him he got a free break job. It was really nice. He really liked that a lot. So he, we give him a credit card with their name on it. And okay. And there's, there's, my there's, sis, my system yeah. think comes into yeah. play here, and I, you know, we know how it works in the really big companies. It's seamless. Yeah. In a barcode, they scan the. Are you have you gotten that sophisticated? Yeah, they have a code. They can go on. They can go onto our website. They can go under it. Uh, on, on their code to that on, on our website they have a code they can go on there and see how much money they have on their loyalty card basically like you this. bought a loyalty card program exactly got yes. it got it yeah okay. i got a whole bunch of them and a lot of times what i do too if i want to give a gift i'll, I'll put 25 dollars on the card and give it to the customer if i see a customer i've talked to i keep a couple in my wallet and they have a car that we're interested in working on i say hey come on you come in here's 25 dollars your first service on my credit card they really like it a lot and it works. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Do, have you found a more loyal customer? Have you found a, an increase uh, of referrals? Yes. It comes out really good. It does work. Yes. Good and I you. talk to people and I, and I run them. I, I, I talk to people and I go to the parking lot. I walk in a park and they go in their car and I said, Hey, you drive a Volvo. Lexus. You know, I said, come on. I say, Hey, where do you get a service? Are you happy? And they said, Oh, maybe I'm taking the deal. I say, Hey, why don't you try us? We work on those cars. Here's a coupon for $25. And it, it sometimes it works. Some, you know, not all the time. I mean, you'll get two out of five or six, 10. That works really well. Good for you. So, good for you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, number 20, Todd, donate a car to a needy family. 
That's you know, idea. this is something that, um, you know, we, we, again, I've seen around the United States. I also have experienced it myself. Um, and you really let, let's everybody that we all know out there in the industry, we're always doing things from the goodness of our heart. There is a lot of benefits that do come with this, getting the city involved, getting the TV and radio local uh, channels also involved, uh, getting also the shop behind it. And there's nothing that's just such a great feeling to help. And when, you're, when your technicians also are involved and see that you help somebody, it really keeps their, their buy-in and they love the culture of the shop and, and all of those things. So there is kind of, there is that sweet spot car out there. It probably changes every year. Pretty good one we can get a hold of, get, get it fixed up. We feel pretty good and pretty safe about that. It's something we could, we could help, help a family out there. And, you know, I, I, we did a, a Dodge Caravan, you know, lost its transmission back in the day. That was pretty common. How to put a new water pump on it. We all know that one with those five bolts there on the front. Put one of those on. That's what we did. Changed the oil. Cleaned the car and detailed it. Um, had some wood paneling on it. And we gave it to a new family. And, I, I mean, it was, it was just, it was it's so heartbreaking to see somebody's look in their eyes where they're going, you're just giving us this? Like, what do you want from us? Well, I don't understand. You're just giving it. It makes no sense. It's like, well, if you brought it back for an oil change in the future, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> but, you know, yeah. And uh, In Buffalo this week and or it's today or tomorrow, there's a, there's a shop who is in concert with a veterans group that's doing this identical thing. So there's, a, there's so much of that out there. You're right, Todd. And, and again, I think it goes back to you know, the, the image of the industry that we're all working so hard to improve. The, the, this, the, this is how to do it. One step, one, one car at a time. Yeah. Thank you Absolutely. for that. Very good. Number 21. We're here for the 21. If we have a few more yes. minutes, we've got some bonuses, right? We have some bonuses here. <laughs> no, give me the envelope, please. Uh, Mark, this is from you. Weekend answering machine. Yeah, we, well, just because I worry about my customers. They do call in. I, I, I check it. I get a buzz and, um, and I try to just calm them with their car if they have an issue or something like that. I do call them back. I don't blow them off on the weekend. I want to make sure they're happy. They know that I know about it and they'll be taken care of. They really like it a lot. So they, they do get a phone back if I'm around town. Somebody does it. I've, I've seen some shops that have an answering service, actually, that uh, yeah. can, uh, can get back to the ownership if there's a, a, a problem. Yeah, so, we've talked about that, too. Yeah. We have an answering service to, if there's a problem. It's, not that, it's very rare. I mean, it's not a lot. It's very rare, but it's kind of nice the customer knows that you, you care about them to call back, and they get really relieved on that. Got so. it. Hey, I, th I want to do a bonus round here. Uh, yes, let's do some yes. bonuses, but I want to say something. Last week we did, our academy was on culture, revving up your culture. And I just want to say to anybody who's watching over the weekend until we put out this, this podcast next week, that was a really powerful, very, very important uh, academy lesson. And, and I do believe it will be in the top 20 listens of all time because it, it really does help not only understand what culture is, but really how to pull some levers and make it happen inside your business. We are so, uh, we can't, some, some of us don't know how to touch the soft stuff the things you cannot see. And, and our guys from last week just hit it out of the ballpark. By the way, next week, we're doing a show on growing your fleet business. And that's going to be great. A lot of great, by the way, a lot of excellent topics coming up in the Academy for 2018. Bonus number 22. Once a month, this is for, this is Todd. I love this, Todd. Once a month, Pay for the text to go to lunch at the busiest lunch spot in town. Make sure that no one swears. Looking good. Shirts tucked in. Explain. It's a marketing lunch. Well, it's firsthand experience, so I can't can't take the credit for it. I have to give it give the credit to uh, my my mentor of uh, Mr. Ian Cook, who I worked to, for for 15 years, and just he was just always marketing, and he'd line us up. Shirts tucked in, because one of the guys, Dave, didn't like to shirt in. He tucked his shirt in, okay? Um, he would tell us, next Wednesday, you're all going out, and I want hair, hair get your hair cut. So we're pre-warned. Also, make sure the shirt that you had was, you know, I we had the the uh, out, outfit company come to the shop, and sometimes, I, you know, you have the messy shirt. So 
have your great shirt. He would send us always to the, the busiest place. And, and I mean, we'd go big. I can say that now because I don't work there. But I'd always get the large drink and the big <laughs> double sandwich he'd be sending us because he gave us the credit card to do it. And he, and he just said, you know, have a great time. But, guys, because uh, there, was, there was logo on the back, logo on the front, hold the door open for people. Let people in front of you in line. Like, just go into the community and just be a great example of just, just being kind. And we'd go and do that, and the swearing came. So somebody, we were one town over, and uh, somebody was dropping some swearing, and somebody heard it. We actually got in trouble for that. So he actually had to talk to us about that. Guys, come on. It, none, don't do that also. Be aware. And do it the first week of the, of the month, if you can. And try to do that maybe, you know, 11 times throughout the year. It's golden. I, uh, I want to title that something different. I want to title that Be an Ambassador. And it's almost like if you think that you're an ambassador, maybe you won't say a bad word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, to teach young people to, <laughs> I guess you're right, Ty. I love it. It's a great idea. I mean, it is, it is gang marketing. I mean, just go out and be seen. Go out and be seen. Yeah. 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 Cool. Good yeah, stuff. Absolutely. Thank you. Let's do another one. Number 23, Jeremy, be the local expert. I love that. Yeah, and there, there's tools that we have and uh, mystery shop your shop and, and ask some very pointed questions about, hey, I've got an 08 BMW 5 Series. It won't uh, move. The transmission's got some issues with it. Um, the way that you answer that question can either convert the leader or not. And if you don't know BMWs, you probably don't want that car in your shop because you know it's going to cost you more money to fix than you're probably going to create on it. Um, but being the local expert is be really good at what you do teach everybody who answers the phone and come in contact with your potential clients that you are the experts on the cars that you service. And I use tools like Identifix, All Data, uh, the repair information. Customers are very educated today. They've got diagnostic trouble codes. They've done more research than you have by the time they've called you. So if you don't sound like you know what you're talking about, you're going to lose market share. If you typically say, well, you know, Todd, something like that. I'm going to need one of my technicians to take a look at that. Why don't you bring it on down? The customer's like, um, okay, really not dealing with an expert here. So if you are a service provider and you don't have the technical knowledge, start getting the technical knowledge. Start learning about the cars that you work on and service. You don't have to become a technician, but it's easy for you to get a little bit of technical knowledge. And then be an expert at helping the customers solve their transportation issue. Hey, Todd, it sounds to me like your car is in a really bad spot. Let's do this. I can have a tow truck there in 20 minutes. Get your car down to the shop. I can get you Ubered over to work right now. What's the address where you're at? Great, I've got an Uber on the way. You're on the road in five minutes, leave the keys in the car, my tow truck will be there. Solve the customer's transportation. So be an expert at what you do really well and exude that confidence when you're on the phone. Hey, thanks, man. Hey, we're almost near the top of the hour and I want to thank you guys. We went through, uh, you know, some bonuses, 21 in, a, in bonuses. Uh, great. Way back to our first uh, number 28 back in August, our first 21 and now right here on the Christmas weekend in 2017. And, and, you know, if anyone ever wants to get in touch or send a question about the show coming up, it's question. The email is question at remarkableresults.biz. Jeremy O'Neill, Mark Goldsmith, Todd Westerlund, Santa Claus. Hey, thanks so much for your contributions to the industry and to the uh, Town Hall Academy. I wish everyone, you and yours, a, a great holiday season and the best of the new year. And, uh, but we'll see you again for the New Year's show next Friday at noon. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thank Tom. you very much. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>